Well, Chris, I know you love our new pastry mat. So would you mind rolling out some pie dough? Absolutely, but you know, I gotta tell you, before we start that, I have to point out these nice concentric circles, sort of this bullseye right in the middle of this mat. And that's important because when you're rolling out something like pie dough, where you want to have a round shape when you're done, it's sort of hard to do. And so these are perfect because it gives you a nice guide to sort of roll the dough. So mm -hmm. let's go ahead and do this. But first, a little bit of flour on the mat. And then we're going to go ahead and put the pie dough right on to the center of the mat. Now please notice that if you want a round shape when you're done, it's very important to start with a round shape mm -hmm. when you start. So we'll put that disc of pie dough right like that. Sort of maybe give it a little, just with your hands, press it down a little bit, and then we're gonna start rolling it out. Well, and besides having the round circles, we also have inches and centimeters on the mat which I think is also a unique feature. Yeah, I like those, those measurements mm -hmm. on the outside of the mat because, you know, a lot of times you're not going to be rolling out something round like we're doing here, but instead you're going to want to have something that is, oh, rectangular, let's say. Right. And it's sort of hard to know sometimes, you know, how big is 9 by 13, for instance. And so these, these markings on the outside will definitely give you something, to, again, to shoot for. It's a guide. Well, you're rolling out a pie dough right now, but you know what? You can also use this for tarts or for pizza. Yeah, any, any dough on this mat just works, works perfectly. And I have to tell you one other thing just about pie dough is you want very, very minimal amount of moisture and you want a lot of fat in the dough because what that does, that's what gives you the flakiness right. that everybody wants to see in a pie dough. And it also sort of helps resist sogginess. And so you have a much better textured dough when you're done. So look at that. We are, I think that's just about got it. So now let's go ahead and put it into our deep dish pie plate. And to do that, to get the right size, we're shooting for that 12 inch outside circle there. And in the event that we would overshoot the circle, we could use the pizza cutter very lightly to trim the, the dough, right? Yeah, that's, that's a really, really good point, Lisa. Because one thing you don't want to do on this mat is to cut with a knife. That is absolute, don't do it, because that would be a disaster on here. Instead, you could use the, you know, the cutter on mm -hmm. here, but use it very, very lightly. With a light touch. So now we've put the dough into the bottom of the pie plate, and very simply I would just take the outside, the, the edge of the dough here, and just with my fingers I'm sort of rolling it back to give a nice little rim. So we're going to go all the way around the pie plate. Again, rolling it, taking that dough and rolling it in my fingers, and pushing it down to make a nice lip on the edge. So all the way around, this is going to be a nice looking pie crust when we're done. Well, I think consultants are really going to appreciate understanding how to roll a pie dough on our new pastry mat. It is really a perfect mat for rolling out these kind of doughs. Just perfect. Okay, Chris, now we're going to focus on the mat being heat resistant. So why don't you demonstrate some peanut brittle for us? All right, peanut brittle it is, and that's a perfect thing to show on this mat. Here's our peanut brittle. So far what we've done is we've cooked sugar, corn syrup and peanuts until almost 300 degrees. See, it's nice and brown in there. And now this is the trick. We're going to go ahead and put in a little bit of baking soda. Now watch this. As you mix in this baking soda, it's going to start to foam up. You see that start yep. getting all foamy like that, starting to do just like a volcano. That's perfect. And that is really the important part of peanut brittle because it's all that air that's getting into that caramel and that's going to have it be nice and tender when you bite into it. It won't be too hard. So look at that. Beautiful. Now onto, give it one last stir, onto the mat it goes. Oh, does that smell good? You know, and our mat is heat resistant up to 400 degrees. There we go. And then we're going to go ahead and fold the mat over. Now remember, this is very, very hot, so you have to be careful. Now, go ahead and take the oven mitt and just very gently press it down. We're going to flatten that peanut brittle. That is perfect. Look at that. That's great. Nice job. And then to sort of keep flattening it, I'm just going to roll that peanut brittle out until it gets nice and flat. And I can really press on this peanut brittle. There you go. And once 
the peanut brittle is flat inside of the mat, all you would do at this point is very simply let it sit until it's cool, and once it's cool, it'll be nice and brittle. Okay, now I'm going to bring over the finished one, and here we're going to peel it back. Oh, that looks wonderful. Look, perfectly non-stick. Yeah, that's right. Peanut brittle does not stick to the silicon at all, and we can break a nice piece off and, and eat some. Sounds great.